Stacked and packed side by side. The Pitts Realty start zone is where we get it underway and Sundance Keeper takes them through turns one and two. Midwest Sheet Metal Caution comes out for turn two. And then three cars as the caution comes out. Nick Drew is who brought the caution out. This is Nick's first race this year. Only ran four events a year ago. But then as he comes through turn four, you see the rest of the carnage. That's the two of Jordan Jones. He started outside row two. The zero of Blake Wimmer started in eighth. And then the 32 of Robbie Ewing, he started in seventh. Did not get a lap in, so those three cars that were all involved in turn four are going to be able to get their spots back. Again, glad to have everyone watching on Flow if you're still with us. Dave Middleton, the man behind the camera. Special thanks to Kane Runyon back at our flagship station. He's pushing the buttons, making sure we all get into your living rooms, onto your cell phones, your iPads, your laptops. Again, we'll do it all day tomorrow again. We'll also be taped for MAV TV, so a little extra on tap for you tomorrow. MAV TV crew is going to stay and do the boat races over at Lake Lucas on Sunday. Sundance Keeper, who got off to a great start originally, will go through the Pitts Realty start zone and do the same thing. But Bobby Williams this time, able to hang with him a little bit better. Looking to the outside down the back stretch. Sundance is going to give him plenty of room, and Bobby Williams is going to look to capitalize, but the Midwest Sheet Metal Caution will come out for the exact same thing that happened as Nick Drew spins again over in turn two. All right, can Sundance keep her? Keep her going. Bobby Williams had a good run with him on that opening lap. And a spin this time brought out by Kenzie Collins, and then he gets cremated as James Moore T-bones him over in turn two. Through the Pitts Realty start zone for the fourth time. Trying to get this race underway. And we got through turn one. Mark that one off the box. It's good and three and four. Complete lap number one and Bobby Williams leads over Sundance Keeper. And through three starts, Sundance had the advantage. Fourth time 
is the charm for Bobby Williams as he slides Sundance back to second. This is the battle for fourth. Robbie Ewing on the inside of Jordan Jones. Ewing able to sneak past him at the line to jump up to fourth. And now he's going to go to work on the inside of Tyler Potter. Used to see Robbie Ewing here quite a bit, but he lives over around the Stockton area. And another track is closer for Saturday night races. So when we don't race on a Saturday, he comes in. And the 15 will spin for the third time as Nick Drew stopped over in turn two. And Nick's going to head off the track. Another car off the track is J.T. Carroll in the 94. Single file restarts now. Usually this is saved for the latter part of the race, but we have been at it for quite some time. So race control decided we're going to go single file for a while, see if we can rattle some laps off and get close to ending this on a Friday night instead of a Saturday morning. Bobby leads Sundance Keeper by three car lengths across the stripe, completing lap number three. And then three cars all side-by-side -side slapping door panels. In turn four, Blake Wimmer, one of the cars involved, the rest of them are on the other side, and I can't quite see who they are until they start to peel off. And as they peel off one by one, we'll see the next one's Ryan Smith in the 36. And then the 23 of Kenny Nutter. The freight train chug chugs down the back stretch. Bobby Williams had a Sundance keeper in Tyler Potter. Ryan Smith did get back out on the track. He'll be the caboose of that train. As the green back in the air through the Pitts Realty restart zone. And Bobby Williams, last year's champion here at Lucas Oil Speedway, still looking for his first win here. Wanting to add that to the nine wins he already has. His nine wins coming at six different tracks. This would be track seven if he's able to hang on. Car's getting pretty physical in the back of the field. As Bobby Williams by 1.3 seconds. Those two cars right there have been doing hand-to-hand -hand combat for the last two laps. That's the 447 of Kenny Prince and the 4 of Caleb Rhodes. And you see the damage on Rhodes' car. And Rhodes is going to spin it all on his own. You saw it up close and personal on your Flow Racing TV monitors. 
as Caleb Rhodes out of Lebanon, Missouri whips it around eight laps into our 20 lap main. Midwest Sheet Metal Caution comes out in the Hobby Time Motorsport Safety Crew. Battle for second will wage on now as Tyler Potter on the outside of Sundance Keeper. Crossover back behind as Sundance plows up the track. Sundance will lose second, and he's going to lose third as Robbie Ewing ducking to the inside. And next to follow in short order would be Jordan Jones. Car slowed. The four of Caleb Broads. As Bobby Williams by two and a half seconds now over Tyler Potter. Just past the halfway point. Now eight laps remaining. Jordan Jones trying to take a position away from Sundance Keeper. That would move him up to fourth, and it does. Bobby Williams now has built up almost a five-second lead over Tyler Potter. Robbie Ewing in third. Good run for Jordan Jones. Jordan's first time here at Lucas Oil Speedway in his brand-new J2 racing chassis and KSE engine. Shane Creech going a lap down as Bobby Williams works to the outside. They'll see two sticks in the air as Bobby crosses underneath the Foley Equipment flag stand. One more circuit for Bobby Williams. Bobby's season got off to a rocky start. Very early on, he totaled his car, had to go to a brand new racing chassis. The champ from last year, who didn't win a race until the postseason, will win in the postseason again. A win at the Ron Jenkins Memorial, his 10th victory of 2024. And he does it by six full seconds over Tyler Potter, Robbie Ewing in third, Jordan Jones fourth, and your top five rounded out by Chase Jones.